Christopher Hitchens, a devout atheist, if I could say so, oh, yeah. was a friend of yours and yes. referred to you as, quote, one of the greatest living Americans and stated that you were one of the most devout believers he has ever met. Mm -hmm. He further stated that you were sequencing the genome of the cancer that would ultimately claim his life and that your friendship, despite their differing opinions on religion, was an example of the greatest <laughs> armed truce in modern times. <laughs> what did you learn from Christopher Hitchens about life or perhaps what is a fond memory you have of this man with whom you've disagreed, but who is also your friend? Yeah, I loved Hitch. I'm sorry he's gone. Iron sharpens iron. <laughs> There's nothing better uh, for trying to figure out where you are with your own situation and your own opinions, your own worldviews than encountering somebody who's completely in another space and who's got the gift, as Hitch did, of challenging everything and uh, doing so over a glass of scotch or two or three. Uh, yeah, we got off to a rough start. Uh, we're in an interaction we had at a rather uh, highbrow dinner. Uh, uh, he was really deeply insulting <laughs> of a question I was asking. But, you know, I was like, okay, uh, that's fine. Let's, let's figure out how we could have a more civil conversation. And then I really learned to greatly admire his intellect and to find the jousting with him. <laughs> and it wasn't all about faith, although it often was. Uh, it was really inspiring and innervating, energizing. <laughs> and then when he got cancer, um, I became sort of his ally, trying to help him find pathways through the various options and maybe helped him uh, to stay around on this planet for an extra six months or so. And I have the warmest feelings of being in his apartment uh, downtown um, over a glass of wine, talking about whatever. Uh, sometimes it was science. He was fascinated by science. Sometimes it was Thomas Jefferson. Uh, sometimes it was faith. And I knew it would always be really interesting. So he's now gone. Yeah. Do you think about your own mortality? Are I you do. afraid of death? I'm not afraid. I'm not looking forward to it. I don't want to rush it because I feel like I got some things I can still do here. But as a person of faith, I don't think I'm afraid. I'm 71. I know I don't have an infinite amount of time left. And I want to use the time I've got uh, in some sort of way that matters. I'm not ready to become a full-time golfer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I don't quite know what that is. I do feel that I've had a chance uh, to do amazingly powerful things as far as experiences. And maybe God has something else in mind. I wrote this book 16 years ago, uh, The Language of God about science and faith, trying to explain how, from my perspective, these are compatible, these are in harmony, they're complementary if you are careful about which kind of question you're asking. And to my surprise, a lot of people seem to be interested in that. They were tired of hearing the extreme voices, um, like Dawkins at one end, and uh, people like Ken Ham and Answers in Genesis on the other end saying, if you trust science, you're going to hell. And they thought there must be a way that these things could get along. And that's what I tried to put forward. And then I started a foundation, BioLogos, which then I had to step away from uh, to become NIH director, which has just flourished, maybe because I stepped away. I don't know. <laughs> but it now has millions of people who come uh, to that website, and they run amazing meetings. And I think a lot of people have really come to a sense that this is okay. I can love science, and I can love God, and that's not a bad thing. So maybe there's something more I can do in that space. Um, maybe that book is ready for a second edition. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> but when you look back, life is finite. What do you hope your legacy is? Hmm. I don't know. This whole legacy thing seems a little <laughs> bit hard to embrace. It feels a little self-promoting, doesn't it? I sort of feel like in many ways I went to my own funeral on October 5th, uh, when I announced that I was stepping down, and I got the most amazing responses from people, some of whom I knew really well, some of whom I didn't know at all, uh, who were just telling me stories about something that I had contributed to that made a difference to them. 
And that was incredibly heartwarming. And that's enough. You know, <laughs> I, I don't want to build an edifice. I don't have a plan for a monument or a statue. God help us. Uh, I do feel like I've been incredibly fortunate. I've had the chance uh, to play a role in things that were pretty profound uh, from the Genome Project to NIH to COVID vaccines. And I ought to be plenty satisfied that I've had enough experiences here to feel pretty good about the way in which my life panned out.